Should I start admitting people? Yeah. Okay. And then we'll start after one minute. Okay, for sure. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rexon Vizcara. I'm a member of the AUN EGC Secretariat. Um, just some reminders. So kindly rename yourself to your institution and name. And then for a smoother flow and a more enjoyable experience of this event, kindly note the following. Please be mindful of your microphones and video cameras throughout the program. We recommend for you to use the side-by-side -side with speaker video option and kindly use the chat function for your questions and comments. Um, if you have something to post on your social media account about this event, you may also use the official conference hashtag AUNEEC2022 so we will be able to see your post as well. Again, welcome to AUNEEC Conference 2022 ecological education and culture, looking back, looking forward. I will now pass the floor to Ms. Sayarchana Darira for the workshop mechanics. Naya. Hey everyone, um, thank you all so much for coming today. Um, I'm so honored to be talking to all of you and also thank you, thank you to all the organizers for organizing this amazing conference. I'm so honored to be here. Um, I'm calling in from the United States of America on the other side of the world. Um, I'm from Arizona. My name is Sai Archana Dura and I am the youth engagement lead of a global movement called Turn It Around Flashcards for Education Futures. In this movement, we've been trying to bridge the gap between young people and and world leaders through a very creative way, through artwork. Oftentimes when we think about politics, we don't necessarily consider artwork being an important component of it. And we've been trying to use artwork to bridge the gap between young people and the decision makers that are making deci decisions about the future of the world. Because oftentimes these world leaders are making decisions about the future of our world without the young people who will be living those futures present in the room. And we want to make sure that young people are heard and seen and listened to when it comes to climate change policies. So that inspired us to create this global movement to basically use art to transform the minds of politicians in the world. Um, and basically this workshop is meant to show you how you can be a leader and empower young people to um, also connect with each other and participate in the climate movement. Because oftentimes when people think about climate change and the movement, um, they tend to think that it's only for politicians or for scientists. But I truly believe that the artists, the dreamers, the writers, the poets all also have a like home in this movement and young people need to be more empowered to participate in climate action and the goal of this workshop is to show you how you can be a leader and empower other young people to be more leaders and we'll go, we are going to be doing this through a very unique process um this is not going to be your typical leadership workshop we are going to go through a lot of unique exercises to connect with 
ourselves and with each other. Um, because in order to truly be an effective leader, it's so important that a person feels connected to oneself, to another human being, or to people around them, and to the world. Um, so basically, we're going to take a deep dive into all these different components and how artwork is connected to that. Um, so I'm so honored to be here. Thank you all so much for coming and also for your commitment towards climate action. Um, so yeah, um, could you go to the next slide? Okay, so this workshop, we're going to do a few exercises in order to become more aware of ourselves and our relationship with the earth. Um, so we're going to do a movement exercise because right now we all are on Zoom and I know that all of you probably have been staring in front of a screen for hours and hours. So um, I wanted to create some sort of exercise for us to connect with our bodies and feel more in tune with ourselves before moving forward, because I think it's so important for leaders to be in tune with their inner selves when it comes to changing the world, um, because all of us also have our own inner worlds that we need to nourish and take care of. Um, so in this exercise, Sides. We're going to shake our hands in front of us, um, just move a little bit, shake your head around a little bit, um, and then start rotating your head um, clockwise, breathing in as you go down, and breathing out as you go up. Breathe in as you go down. Exhale as you go up. Now change directions, go the opposite direction, counterclockwise. Breathing in as you go down and breathing out as you go up. Feel free to close your eyes while you do this. Taking deep breaths in and out. At the top, I invite you to sit with yourself and rest for a little bit, noticing any sensations in your body. When you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes and bring yourself back into this room. I think something so important to acknowledge whenever we do the work we do is to be in the present moment. And that's why I opened with a meditation. Oftentimes when people think about the climate movement, they tend to neglect the importance of self-connection and mindfulness. And I think it's so important that we all are in tune with ourselves and grounded while doing this work and um, addressing this crisis. Um, because this climate change crisis can be heavy sometimes times and I think it's so important that we all tune in with our bodies and connect with ourselves before doing the work that we do. Um, there's this saying um, by Alexandria. Um, she's one of my favorite um, poets in the world and she says that an empty well cannot feed a village and when you have an empty cup you can't really pour to others and support others so it's so important that you work to support yourself um, which is why I wanted to open with a meditation. Um, so the second part of this exercise is going to be very interesting. We are going to explore our relationship with the world around us. Um, so take a moment and think about where the sun is located around you. Is the sun located in front of you, behind you, to the left of you, to the right of you? Take a moment and point to where you think the sun is located. I think the sun for me is located towards my left. Um, I'm not sure though, and it's okay to not know. Um, and now point towards where you think the moon is. Where do you think the moon is currently located based on your geographical location? For me, I'm going to guess that the moon is over here towards my right. Um, and think about now where Mars is. Where do you think the planet Mars is located? Um, I think Mars is located towards my north. Um, 
So yeah, and this exercise is really interesting because it's so interesting to think about how we as human beings sometimes are not very aware of where we are located <laughs> compared to other celestial bodies um, in this earth. And what's really important and interesting about this is how deeply disconnected we can be from the earth and where the earth is. Oftentimes when we go about this world, sometimes we forget um, to think about the kind of like processes of the earth and where the earth is compared to the universe. The universe is so big and here we are on this small planet <laughs> trying to save this planet from climate change. And I think it, it puts things into perspective a lot about um, how important it is to be in tune with this planet and where it is located in the universe and also the importance of where we are in this universe. Um, so that was a movement exercise. We kind of moved a little bit and we also kind of thought about where the earth is moving in relation to other parts of the world um, and the universe. Um, so yeah, and I guess this is just meant to show you that um, it's really important to have a relationship not only with yourself, but with the earth outside of you. Um, so next slide. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the project. I know I dived into a few exercises to connect with ourselves before talking about the project, um, but I wanted to introduce what this workshop will be about. So today we're going to be talking about the power of storytelling and art and creating connections with people around the world, and not only people outside of us, but with our own selves. Um, art is such a powerful way of creating empathy and awakening people to this climate crisis. Art is such a powerful tool in evoking emotions such as hope, such as action, such as motivation. And the whole purpose of this movement is to wake people up to the climate crisis, but to not only wake them up to what's happening um, in the world, but also what changes they can make towards addressing this crisis. Art, um, oftentimes when people think about solving climate change, they think that we just need the scientists or the politicians, but we need everyone on board. And what's so amazing about art is that art is a relationship builder. Um, this climate crisis was caused by a lot of broken relationships in the world. And I think what will solve this climate crisis is the the first step is empathy and us rebuilding relationships with one another and understanding that we deserve as a human race to survive and that we can save ourselves. And what is amazing about art is art is such a powerful way of relating to one another and to the planet. It inspires dialogue, it inspires empathy, and it's a form of revolutionary action. According to Andrew Freyband, he presented um, earlier today at one of the plenary talks and what I love about art is art is one of the most universal languages in the world. No matter what language you speak, whether it's English, Spanish, Spanish, Swahili, um, Chinese, Mandarin, no matter what language you speak, you can always connect with a piece of artwork. For example, in this picture here, you don't need to learn a language for 10 years to understand or connect with this piece of artwork. And that's what we love about artwork. And what we've been doing with this movement is we've been sharing these pieces of artwork with world leaders at climate change conferences, including United Nations conferences, UNESCO conferences, and conferences with members of parliament. And what's really interesting about these global conferences is that people throughout different corners of the world come together to solve climate change, and they all speak different languages, which can be an issue sometimes, and being able to use art to communicate the visions that young people have about this crisis is something that's so valuable and so transforming. And what I love about art is art evokes raw emotion and inspires transformation. It shifts people, it causes changes in the media, it opens up people's eyes. Um, think about your favorite movie or your, your favorite piece of artwork and what it makes you feel. That's the power of art. It's able to make people feel and connect with what it is in front of them. And our goal is to wake people up to the climate crisis and also kind of like create more urgency in this issue and basically inspire more people to be involved, which is why we've taken the route of artwork. Um, could you go to the next slide? Thanks. 
Thank you. Um, so basically, um, Turn It Around Flashcards for Education Futures is a global movement that started a year ago to basically bridge the gap between young people and policymakers. Something that we noticed in these global conferences were that a lot of older people were making decisions about the future of the world without young people present in those rooms. They were making decisions behind closed doors, young people were not being involved, and it was truly heartbreaking because these leaders are making decisions about the future of the world without the people who will be living those futures present in the room. And we wanted to change that because oftentimes in governmental bodies, um, they tend to be older people and we wanted younger people to feel like they could be heard and seen and listened to in this movement, which is why we created this art project. So basically, um, in 2021, we had young people throughout the world send us artwork and writing depicting what changes they envision in environmental education and environmental policy and we had them send it to us and we created a card deck out of this so each card in this card deck had um, a piece of artwork on one side and a piece of writing on the other side oftentimes each piece was from someone from another part of the world and it communicated what changes young people wanted to see from world leaders and we created a whole flashcard deck and we traveled to different conferences around the world to share these flashcards with people um, that were making these climate policies we were able to share it with john Kerry, he's the u.s climate envoy we were able to share it with Patricia Espinosa, she's the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Executive Secretary. Um, we were able to share it with members of parliament and the United Nations Youth Envoy. So we've been able to share these cards with so many people around the world in order to make sure that young people's voices and ideas were heard in these policy making rooms. And what we loved about art is that oftentimes when you think about policy makers, um, if you hand them a hundred page document, they are less likely to read that document uh, word by word. But when you hand them pieces of artwork, they're more likely to look at it because number one, it takes less time to look at a piece of artwork compared to a hundred page document. And um, artwork has such a powerful way of evoking raw emotion and creating connection between people. And like I mentioned before, a huge part of solving this climate crisis is creating relationships and building relationships between different people in this climate movement. Um, so that is what we've been working to do with these flashcards. Next slide. So um, basically what we love about this is oftentimes when we think about the way this world works, um, adults usually make decisions for your kids um, and adults usually make flashcards for kids and we wanted to turn it around, which is what inspired us to name this movement Turn It Around. And this is so unique because now flashcards are being made by children and youth for adults to communicate what changes they envision in environmental policy. And what's been amazing about this card deck is that it's also turned into an educational tool. So it's been sent to classrooms around the world so that young people also get educated about the climate crisis. And it's also been sent to different educational organizations. And the goal of this is oftentimes a lot of curriculums um, tend to neglect climate change education. For example, for me, I never really learned about climate change until I was 20 years old which is crazy, 20 years of my life, my education lacked in teaching me about climate change. And then I went to a university in Arizona and I took a class on climate change and it completely opened my eyes to what was happening. And I think we're doing our young people a disfavor when we're not telling them about this crisis and educating them on how to solve it. And this project works to empower young people to solve this climate crisis, which is so exciting. Um, next slide. So um, last year we got 430 submissions from 44 countries and five continent, continents. 180 from, were from Asia, 110 were from North America, 74 were from South America, 22 from Africa, and 22 from Europe. And we had a whole collection globally from youth from every corner of the world illustrating what changes they wanted to see in climate change policies, which was amazing. This is a whole global collection. And um, what's really cool is now we are partnering with AUN. Um, could you go to the next slide? Thanks. To build a new card deck of 
simply artwork and writing from young people in Southeast Asia specifically. So this card deck is going to tell the stories and the experiences and the ideas of young people specifically in the Southeast Asia region because um, what we noticed is the young people and people who live in these regions tend to experience unique issues due to climate change and we wanted to highlight these specific experiences with world leaders and make sure that um, your experiences were heard with people that are making decisions about climate policies. So now we are partnering with AUN to do this whole new movement, analyzing and basically collecting artwork and writing from young people um, to create a new card deck. And um, if you are interested in participating or know anyone interested in participating, um, the website to submit um, artwork is down below. Um, so now that I talked a little bit about this movement, I wanted to talk about how all of us can empower young people to take action in climate change and to also um, empower young people to participate in this Turn It Around Cards movement. Because oftentimes when we think about empowering young people and building leadership opportunities for them, there's so many routes we can take. And I wanted to show you a few different ways we can work with young people to help them connect with this toolkit um, in order to empower them to also participate in this project. Um, what's really important about the Turn It Around cards is that we want to use it as a tool to motivate young people to participate in um, climate change policy. And oftentimes when someone is six years old, they are not necessarily aware of policy terms or um, specific climate change terms, but someone is young as six years old is able to create artwork and writing. And our goal is to basically bring them into this movement because we need all the young people involved. We need to empower young people. And this leadership workshop will basically explore how we can do that. Um, so next slide. So um, this workshop will go through three different um, focuses. The first one is we're going to focus on some exercises that you all can do with young people um, to show them how to, to participate in this climate crisis and how to solve it. Um, and I'm going to take you through these exercises, have you practice them so that you know how to show uh, them. The what it is, um, we are going to create some new ideas for exercises too, um, for all of us to also lead our own workshops for young people around the world to empower them. And then the last component of this workshop is very important. Basically, we are going to learn how to empower young people to not only learn about the climate crisis, but to take action. Because education without action about climate, the climate crisis is not truly um, like influential. We want to empower people to take action in their communities and to show them that while this crisis is happening there also there are solutions towards solving it next slide um, so yeah, so the first component is workshop exercises we're going to go through a few exercises um, so yeah next slide. Okay, so this is going to be the second exercise. The first exercise we did was meditating and pointing at different bodies, um, like the body of the sun and the moon and different celestial bodies to become aware of our relationship, not only with ourselves, but with the earth. And this next exercise is going to be very interesting. Um, if you have a pen and paper in front of you, um, I invite you to get it. If you don't have a pen and paper, totally okay. Um, um, you can just watch, um, but for the next five minutes, I wanted you to find an object near you. It can be anything. It can be your phone. It can be a mug. Um, it can be um, the table, and I want you to draw it in five minutes. Um, so, for example, it can be something as simple as a mug. Um, it can be your laptop that you're viewing this um, through, and I want you to take a moment to draw it. And I want you to truly focus on this object in front of you. Notice its color, its texture, what it looks like, and um, take a few moments to draw it.
after a few minutes, I'll bring us back. Um, so just truly take some time to take in the object in front of you. And if you don't have a piece of pen and paper in front of you, totally okay. Um, just take a moment to notice the objects around you. Start wrapping up your drawing in the next 30 seconds. Now I invite you to come back to the room. Um, so whatever object you drew in front of you, um, take a moment to think about your perceptions of it. What things did you notice about it? Did you notice um, the texture, the shadows of the object, um, where the object was located? What's incredibly amazing about artwork and creating artwork is that it allows us not only to experience things with our eyes, but also with our body. Um, artwork truly brings us um, to connect with our inner selves more and allows us to experience things beyond just the eyes. Because when you create artwork, you're not just taking in the world through your eyes, you're also taking in the world through your body, um, whether it's through the way your hands move when you create a piece of artwork, um, whether it's um, you holding the object in front of you and looking at it. Um, artwork is so amazing in allowing people to experience the world beyond just the eyes, but also with the body. And I think it's so important that when we think about climate change, we don't just look at it through our eyes, but also with our body and how we relate to it beyond just the sensation of the eyes. Um, artwork truly brings people back into their bodies and connects with themselves more. And it allows people to view things in a different perspective. Um, I bet that when you drew your object, you notice things about it that you probably didn't notice before. And that's what we love about artwork is that it allows people to shift their relationships with objects by experiencing things with both their eyes and their body. Um, so now we are going to do um, the next exercise. If you could go to the next one, fix. Thank you. Okay, so um, I need all of you to um, type up this website in um, your um, browser. Turn it around, cards.org um and open it i also sent it in the chat box so open it in front of you and um take a moment and look through the artwork in front of you these pieces of artwork were created by young people as young as six years old from so many different corners of the world. And um, today we're gonna do an exercise um, through breakout room sessions, just to create more interaction and connection with one another. Um, so each breakout room will have about two to three people in it. And what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask the group to choose one piece of artwork. And what I want you to do is I want you to describe the artwork. How does that piece of artwork make you feel? What is it communicating with you? And what type of message do you think that piece of artwork gives to a politician, if it's given to a politician? Um, so I am going to have Vix create breakout room sessions. So in each breakout room, um, introduce yourself to the other person or other people and choose a piece of artwork from the website. 
And then um, once you do, um, have a conversation about what it makes you feel and what it's trying to communicate and what it can communicate if it's given to a politician. Um, so Vix will open the breakout room shortly and um, I will give you all about six minutes to do this exercise and then you'll be called back into the main room. So you will get a notification and then press yes and then join the room. Okay. Okay, so I am moving. Uh, so uh, yeah, okay. I think at this point we have three people per room. Okay. I think okay. someone left. Okay. You can pause the recording. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, once people are back. Thank you. Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, how was the exercise? Does anyone want to talk a little bit about what they talked about in the group? If not, I can always type it in the chat box. Um, but what you just did is you jumped into the mind of a politician who might have been handed one of these cards, um, which is what we're, we've, we've been doing with this project. We've been sharing this with politicians and um, What's also so cool is that you also got to experience um, this piece of artwork um, emotionally. And yeah, how does everyone feel? Did any insights come from this? Feel free to send in the chat box too. So what's really interesting is when we perceive artwork, um, we're mapping out our subconscious. Um, artwork is such a beautiful way to connect with our subconscious mind and psycho like psychologically, and it allows us to perceive art um, through our subconscious. And it's a way to kind of like map out how our subconscious views the world. Because for example, this piece of artwork in front of you, different people can interpret it in different ways. Um, there can be a thousand different inter interpretations from this one piece of artwork. And each interpretation is a reflection of one's subconscious mind. And oftentimes your interpretation is also the way you view the world and your approach to this climate crisis. Um, so understanding your subconscious is so important in this movement. And what's amazing about artwork is that it allows people to map out their own subconscious minds and connect with their inner workings to understand kind of like how they perceive the world. And I think this is so important for politicians too when we hand them these cards that were created by young people throughout the world because it allows them to take a look within and think about how they relate to the climate crisis and how they can create change around it. Um, so yeah, um, thank you for participating in this exercise. Um, next slide. So now um, what we're going to do is we are going to analyze how people communicate through art. Um, this breakout room will be a little bit shorter. It'll be only four minutes long. And what I want you to do in your group is choose one of these three pictures. Um, maybe take a picture of it on your phone or um, check in with your group and analyze um, the approach of this picture. Or if you want, 
go out to the website and find a, your own piece of artwork that you connect with and analyze their approach. How are they working to open up the minds of people around them? How are they creating this piece of artwork? What about this piece of artwork sparks emotions and how are they capitalizing artwork to um, evoke change? So I want you to analyze the approach um, artistically um, of a piece of artwork. And this will be a shorter breakout room session, actually maybe three minutes long. Um, so Bix, if you could open up the breakout room sessions again for three minutes, that'd be amazing. Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, so what I just had you do is an example of an exercise you can do with young people when it comes to inspiring them to create their own pieces of artwork for this project. Um, someone as young as five years old can do this sort of exercise and someone, no matter what age they are, as old as even like 60 years old can also do this exercise in order to understand how a human being can achieve um, a message that they're trying to communicate with another human being through artwork. Um, so um, understanding how artists take up these approaches, I think is so important and also understanding how we can also leverage our own approaches towards communicating with um, people through artwork. Um, next slide. So now, okay, this is one of my favorite exercises um, in the workshop, it's called fortune telling. So, um, like this conference is focusing on, a huge component of solving climate change is looking back and looking forward. Um, and what we've been trying to do with the cards sometimes is use them as a way to communicate about the past, present, and future. Um, if you think about fortune telling cards, um, sometimes um, people use cards to tell, predict the future or talk about the past. And these cards can sometimes be used as a way to analyze the past and the present and the future about climate change. Um, so if you go back one slide um, previously, um, for example, um, in exercise four, um, we saw three different cards and um, each card could be used to communicate something different um, based on how you interpret it. You can interpret a card to communicate about the past and what the past was like and what changes we wanna see um, from the past. You could use it a card to communicate what's happening in the present moment. You could also use a card to communicate a message about the future and a potential future we could be living in. Um, so this is going to be an interesting exercise. All of us are going to become fortune tellers in a way. Um, what we're going to do in your group is you're going to assign each person to either predict the past, the present, or the future, and choose a card from the website and analyze what that card is saying about the past, present, or future. And all of you are going to have a conversation about that and what that card communicates about the climate crisis and what we have to learn about not only looking back, but also looking forward and what we can do in the present moment to bridge that gap. Um, so again, um, each person in your group will be assigned either the past, present, or the future, and each person will choose a card and analyze that card based on what it communicates about the past, present, or future. Um, and then this breakout room will be about seven minutes long. Um, so Vix, if you could create breakout rooms for seven minutes, that would be amazing. And then you'll get a notification to join the room. Hi, 
Hi everyone. Welcome back. Um, does a representative from each group want to share what they talked about? If not, totally okay. Um, if you want, you can also type in the chat box if um, you don't feel like sharing out loud. So um, while we wait for anyone, if you want to share in the chat box, um, what I think is so valuable about artwork is that it holds the ability to teach us lessons about the past and also brings us like into the present moment and what's happening right in front of us. And then it also um, shares us warnings about the future and what the future can look like. Um, so if anyone wants to share what they talked about, um, I would love to hear what you have to say. Um, you can also type in the chat box. If not, no worries. Um, we can also go to the next exercise. Um, so I think someone unmuted. Um, King, would you like to say something? Oh, yes. Um, yes, I, I can. Um, the, well, the picture that, that my group has picked, uh, can I share the screen or? Yes. Sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So the pictures that my group has, has picked is this little stairs right here. Mm -hmm. um, at first, um, we, 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 we see that the, the path of this stair should be like uh, constructed uh, very um, beautifully uh, by an uh, artificial uh, uh, products, elements, um, and and in the past, we kind kind of progress in that way for for human in in generals. And what is in the present knowledge, as you can see here, there it is a reconciliation between with the natures. It's like nature is coming back to to tell us that oh oh we need to be more in considerations with the, the natures. And now the the stairs are now like uh, have a green you know leaf and and what and whatnot. So. It signifies that the, these two things must go together to progress, to go up the stairs. You have to 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 experience these two elements of together of the of the human products and also the nature as well. And if we can marry the two connections together and progress without falling, um, we can achieve something uh, at the end of this staircase. Yeah. Wow, I'm so blown away by that interpretation and that description. Like, I think that's such a beautiful way of looking at this picture because like, it's so interesting how one picture can communicate so many different messages, um, whether like whatever lens you look through it. And I loved what you said about the reconciliation in nature and also what we can do moving forward. I think that was so beautiful. Um, and it's also interesting how this fortune telling exercise about the past, present and future can also remind us that as we interpret the past and the present, we also hold the power to change the future and we can be those instruments that change the future for the better. Um, so I love that interpretation. Thank you so much for sharing. I was blown away. Um, I think you are such an amazing, um, eloquent speaker and writer. You definitely should write more poetry if you don't already. Um, but yeah, thank you. And um, we have about 15 minutes left of the session. So um, we're going to close it um, very soon. Um, could we share the PowerPoint again briefly? Okay, so um, I'm going to combine the next two exercises into one. Um, so basically, the whole point of this workshop was to show all of you um, how you can lead your own um, leadership activities for young people and empower them to participate in the climate movement. Um, I took you through a few exercises, including analyzes, analyzing the pieces of artwork, meditating, um, thinking about your relationship with nature. And now it's your turn to think about different ideas you have on how to engage young people um, in this movement and how to empower them to become leaders. Um, so these can be any sort of exercises you think can empower them to connect with themselves and the world around them. Um, so, and then the next slide, I also wanted to look at quickly. Um, 
So along with thinking, thinking about different exercises you can do for young people, it's also important that you add actionable items to these exercises. So after having them interpret the climate movement or thinking about um, their space in relation to the movement or um, analyzing pieces of artwork, it's so important to also couple this with action. Um, what sort of action can young people take in their areas to create change? It can be organizing climate marches. Um, I know I've helped organize climate marches in my past. Um, it can be writing letters to local politicians. It can be creating recycling programs. It can be advocating for um, more education that talks about sustainability at your university institutions or at different schools. Um, so basically, um, I'm going to put you all into a breakout room session for about six minutes, and I am going to um, share this document with all of you in order for you to fill out um, your ideas on um, how all of you can be leaders and how all of you can empower young people around you to create change. Um, because um, all of you are so powerful in sparking change around you. And I think what's so important in the climate movement is to empower young people to join it. Um, so yeah, in the next um, six minutes, if you can just open the document and talk in your group and fill out some ideas you have on how to um, basically create different activities for young people to get involved in um, climate change and um, what action steps you can do to show them how to create change in their local areas. Um, so if you can just open the document and then um, Vix, if you could create to breakout room sessions again for six minutes, that would be amazing. And yeah. Perfect, I will see you all in six minutes. Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, I've been looking at the document and all these are such amazing ideas. Um, I love them so much and I think they hold so much potential to kind of like awaken young people to take action um, in this climate crisis. Um, and I think if there's anything I want you to take away from this workshop is that all of you hold the power to create change in your communities and empower young people to take action. And I loved hearing on seeing all the ideas you had around engaging young people. And I think um, these are just incredible ways to not only educate people about the crisis, but also show them how to take action and solve it. Um, which is the whole point of all these leadership workshops and curriculums. Um, so thank you so much for joining. Um, next slide. So now we're gonna close with a very brief one minute meditation just to think about moving forward, what we want to contribute to the world. Um, so take a deep breath in. And breathe out slowly. Take another deep breath in and breathe out slowly. Imagine that you are the earth, that your lungs are trees, your bloodstream is the ocean. Your limbs are trees. Your hair is plants. Imagine your entire being is the earth.
Every inhale you take is the earth taking in all that we've been putting into the environment. And every exhale you take is all the love and support that the earth has been giving to humanity for generations to come. Think about the difference between how human beings treat this earth and how this earth looks after human beings. If any emotions arise, let them come. Taking deep breaths in and out. Now in the silence, ask yourself, what sort of contribution do you want to make to this earth? What sort of difference do you want to make in the world? Now ask yourself, what is something you can do tomorrow to take that first step into accomplishing that very thing you think you can do to help this world heal? Taking deep breaths in and out. When you're ready, you may open your eyes. I think it's so important to remember that we are all a part of this earth and this earth is also a part of ourselves. And we aren't really as separate from this earth as we think we are. And that there is this pro profound connection between our existences and the earth's existence. And all of us hold the power to create change. No matter how small you think the change is, it is change and it does have meaning. Um, so I hope you never doubt in your ability to change this world for the better. Um, and then next slide. Um, and moving forward, if you are interested in getting any young person you know involved in this movement, um, go to turnaroundcards.org um, to have them send us artwork and writing, because our goal is to share their artwork with policymakers and politicians. Um, some of us are going to COP27 in Egypt, um, the United Nations Climate Change Conference, to meet these world leaders. And we want to share the visions of young people from Southeast Asia with these world leaders. Um, so please send us your artwork and writing or let anyone you know who's young um, to get involved. Um, here's our social media handles. Um, and if anyone wants to stay connected, whether it's over email or over phone, um, always message, you can feel free to message me in the group chat. Um, and I hope you remember yeah. your contribution to the world holds so much power. And um, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time out of your day to attend this conference and to learn about how to empower young people around you. Um, so thank you so much for coming. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to send them in the chat box. And I just feel so honored to have talked to all of you today. So thank you so much again. Perfect. Thank you so much, Naya, for facilitating this workshop. Okay. Big Sun, thank you, you can have the. Thank you. Thank you so much. We can have the slides. Okay. We will uh, proceed with the close uh, conference, closing remarks. Well, before that, again, we would like to thank our facilitator, uh, Saya, 
for delivering or for facilitating the worship entitled Turn It Around, The Power of Art to Transform Our Planet. Let's give her a warm round of applause. At this juncture, I'd like to call on the Executive Director of AUNEEC, Dr. Marie Asuntakui Keng, for the closing remarks for the conference. So, Katshut, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Eman. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I hope you all had a fruitful time during this session. It was a, such a wonderful session and the conference as a whole. Uh, on behalf of the conference secretariat, I would like to thank you for participating in the events yesterday and today. We hope uh, that the lectures and panel discussion this morning inspired you to become more engaged as citizens who will help define a more positive future. Uh, this particular session has really shown us how to do just that, especially how we can make a difference in, uh, in helping our children understand the situation where we are now in the climate crisis, especially, and how we can take action. I hope that you now have uh, clearer ideas that you can uh, bring with you, uh, that you have learnings that I, I hope you can uh, bring to your schools and to your circles of influence. Special thanks to Ms. Sayar, Sayarchana Darira for facilitating this session. Saya, it was such a wonderful workshop. And I hope, I, I, I wish there were more people who could listen to you. This was such a wonderful experience for all of us. And to all the participants, thank you once again for making time for this session. And as we end this conference, we invite you to join us in the future activities of the ASEAN University Network on ecological education and culture. Stay safe and well. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Doc Atchut, for the closing remarks. Um, we will take a souvenir photo, but before that, we would like to show you or we would like to inform you of the evaluation form for the conference, Vixen. Okay. So um, we would like to invite you to please accomplish the evaluation of this conference by scanning the QR code or clicking the link which I will be posting on the type on the chat box. Okay. The evaluation form will remain open until tomorrow and you will receive your certificate of participation upon accomplishing and submitting the evaluation form. Okay. The link will obviously remain on the chat. Now I would like to invite everyone to turn on your camera if possible for our souvenir photo for this. Okay. 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 Everyone, smile. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, Saya. Have a good Thank night's you. rest. <laughs> Get some rest, Saya. Thank you. Thanks again. And have a safe flight. Where is she going? To New York, though, from Arizona. Okay, I see. Okay.